Hi, welcome back to the channel, Have Roots, Will Travel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltari, and I am a genealogist and a passionate traveler, and I'm so happy you're here. I have been over the last several years examining Les Filles du Roi individually. There are over, uh, I think, 700 of them, and Les Filles Marie over almost 262, I believe, at last count. So there's a lot of ladies who became founding mothers and founding, I like to call Les Filles Marie, the marriageable girls, truly founding grandmothers. And I've been examining each of their lives because each of their lives means that there is a direct descendant, if they produce descendancy, that is here today because of them. And that's why I'm doing what I do because it's just so amazing. And these lives, some of them are just overwhelmingly amazing. So with that being said, I also want to make sure to let you know that if you've got a special one, a lot this particular couple that I'm doing here actually was suggested by someone. And so if you would like a certain Fia Marie or Fille du Roi, do not hesitate in the comments below or email me directly. That's usually the best way to email me directly at Lisa at HaveRootsWillTravel.com and let me know. I like this one. Can't promise you that I'll do it right away, but she'll go on the list. So that's that's a good thing. So speaking of lists, there's also Christmas coming up. So I want to make sure to let you know that September is the right time to start inquiring and start placing those orders and making certain that we can do something together if you've got a special gift in mind. So another way that I want to, another thing I want to remind you of is to support the channel by subscribing, by liking this particular episode, and also by um, making sure that you press that notify button so that you're always ahead of the curve, if you will. And the next couple of ways are ways to help the channel grow. And we have coffee, which is an external platform, which is kind of like buy me a cup of coffee. Kind of That's kind of how it started. And it's a coffee.com external platform that lots of people use. And then we have Patreon, which is a monthly service where you pay either a dollar, ten dollars, or twenty-five dollars a month, depending on the level you want, and depending on what looks good to you in terms of the rewards you would get. Also on my website, Have Roots Will Travel, there's also a PayPal button there. So have a look at that as well. Also, remember that you can purchase this particular episode if you go on HaveRootsWillTravel.com, the shop part of that, and um, it'll give you instructions on what to do. So with that being said, let's get started with our next Fia Marie. Let us talk a little bit about Les Fia Marie. These girls, about 262 of them, come before Les Filles du Roi. I always like to make sure that you are aware of this. Most most of you who have followed my program and my episodes know this, but I just want to make sure. So between 1634 to 1662, about 28 years, we have about 262 girls that would come to New France and, and essentially populate or help populate the country. It averages out to about 10 a year. Obviously, that's not enough to create um, a country. And that is why Jean Talon and the king eventually took it over in 1663 and said, we gotta, we gotta speed things up a bit. And so, but however, Les Filles Marie are to be truly treasured because of the fact that they came when there really wasn't a country. They came without any kind of dowry or gifts from the king or anything. Yes, their passages were usually paid And now we come to the second of the three episode arc, episode 92, Françoise Radisson, who was a viewer request and led to this um, three part series. So let's have a look at Françoise and her journey. So Françoise was born in 1636 in Paris, France. Her parents were Pierre Esprit Radisson and Madeleine Henault making her the half-sister of Marguerite Ayer. Now, she is from the 6th arrondissement of, of Paris, 
and she is also part of the the church that she would have been baptized in is the church of saint sulpice a very very famous church um, it is only slightly smaller than notre dame and thus the second largest church in the city construction on this church on the new church began in 1646 so that would mean can you imagine that Françoise was actually born before this church would have come into existence it, this is her parish and so obviously there was a church beforehand but it just goes to show you how deep in history um, these stories are. In the sixth arrondissement, where she's from, is also called today Luxembourg. It's an extremely cultural and educational area of Paris. And we know that the sixth arrondissement is the reference to Luxembourg is in reference to the seat of the Senate and the gardens which are situated on the rive gauche of the river Seine and includes world famous educational institutions such as the École Nationale Supérieure des Beaux-Arts, les Écoles des Hautes uh, Études en Sciences and the Institut de France, as well as a concentration of some of Paris's most famous monuments, including the Odéon Théâtre de l'Europe and Le Pont des Arts, which links the first and sixth arrondissements over the Seine. We have the Saint Germain Abbey and the Saint Sulpice Church, which, which we've talked about. And it also includes the historic district of Saint Germain des Prés. And so this is really, really an amazing area to come from in terms of culture and education. So this is where um, the Radisson family. And remember, we've talked about Radisson uh, with Marguerite Ayet and, and her um, involvement with him. This is where this Radisson family was emanating from. So she would come very early to New France, 1649. So we're looking at uh, presumably 13 years of age. She embarks on this, um, this great adventure. And obviously, the fact that her brother would have been there is part of probably why she came so early. Now, let's see the groom that she ends up marrying. So guess what? We have no information on Claude Vola. Uh, he, we know that he's born in 1639, but that's about it. His parents are unknown. The location is unknown. And when did they get married? It was a little bit, a few years after she arrived. So around the age of 17, sometime in 1653, we do not have a marriage record, the, her, Françoise and Claude would have been married at Trois-Rivières. So Françoise and Claude further settle in Trois-Rivières. It is, of course, only the second city of Quebec. It was founded in 1634. It was named Trois-Rivières because the St. Lawrence River has three channels that form at the mouth of the St. Lawrence River. Trois-Rivières is French for three rivers. Trois-Rivières has a very strategic location on the St. Lawrence River and helped the new nation grow and prosper. It also proved to be an important battle in the American Revolution. Um, in 1676, there was a famous battle of three rivers. Some of you may have ancestors in this area who fought on the American side, and you might be surprised that you would qualify to be a daughter of the American Revolution or a son of that same organization. They would go on to have nine children, their first two twins, were Pierre and Claude who became priests. And then we have Françoise who would die at the age of five. Marguerite would marry Pierre Noël Le Gardard, the son of Claude Le Gardard, the governor of Torrivière. But unfortunately, she would pass away at age 17 after having had two daughters who did not survive. Françoise would die in infancy. Etienne would marry Geneviève Le Tendre, a widow with two children, but did not have any children. Jean-François would marry Marguerite Godefroy and have three children, all of whom made it to adulthood. 
Nicola would marry Geneviève Neal and would have two children, both of whom would survive. Neil, uh, I'm sorry, Ignace de Chal was the last son, and we do not have any further information on him. We only have the 1666 census for this family. We have Claude, Françoise, Pierre et Claude, they're, they're twins, I love that, Marguerite, and Etienne, who was 15 months at the time. Françoise would unfortunately pass away in October of 1677 at the heartbreaking of about 41 years of age. She and Claude would have been married about 24 years. And she would leave us with a small descendancy, 32, but obviously her line has carried on despite the fact that she had such a short life. Claude would not remarry and would presumably have raised his children on his own. We do not have a death record for him, and we believe he died somewhere between 1689 and 1696, based on some of the contracts that where he's listed or not listed. He would have been between 50 and 57 years of age. So ends the story of Françoise Radisson, although her time here was so short and her descendancy was small. Her impact is still felt. We are so grateful she came to our shores and that she participated in the Redisson family, if you will, and in the tapestry that was and is New France and ultimately Quebec and North America. We are ever, ever so honored and we bless her memory. I also want to say thank you to my patron supporters and subscribers. You are the wind beneath my wings, so thank you ever so much. And with that being said, I will see you on episode 93 of Les Fianeries. Until then.